everybody. Welcome back. It's Monday after Easter. And I know I've been saying it for a long time about these inner frame pieces that I want to weld in here. Whether it's going to help it or not. Or whether it matters or not. I don't know. But basically what I want to do is obviously put a cap in here. And then take that piece and put it flat right here. And obviously I'll weld it on top and bottom, make it smooth, make it nice so that like the tire can't ever catch anything like this. And then when the wheelhouse is in, the wheelhouse actually sits a little bit back. So there will be maybe, I don't know, a quarter to three eighths of an inch where that wheelhouse will sit back like that. I wanna get these going first, get this stuff all back capped, welded in, just so that that's done. And then uh, we'll probably move on to this anti-roll bar and I'll get that crank in. And then I will fully weld out this back piece um, back here. So if you remember, I made these brackets and these are the Funkhauser sliders. I'll, I wanna get all this stuff final welded in so that we're not having stuff like that go on and it's, it'll be done and, and in the car. So. First things first is I need, I have a template, I believe for this frame rail side that I already took. Um, I just need to lay that out on some of this 14 gauge cold rolled, get it cut and um, burn both of these things in. <laughs> We got all those cleaned or all those cut out and I've got all this pretty well uh, sanded down and cleaned up. And then this, this will go in here like that. We'll weld it on the top and the bottom all the way, a uh, little sections at a time. And then we will flap the wheel, all this stuff so that it looks nice and clean and then nothing can cut on it. It's Wednesday, pot smokers day. And I gotta do something that is one of the hardest things you're ever gonna do in life. And that's put one of your dogs down. Uh, especially if they're one of your homies. I've had my dog since, well he was born in 04, but I didn't get him till 05. And uh, been in my life through everything. <clears throat> relationships, houses, careers, cars, um, everything. So this one's going to hurt me. Uh, try to get another cattle dog to keep the old one around a little longer. We had another cattle dog and he passed away quite some time ago. Lost his vision, which is weird because these dogs normally don't have any problems about as reliable as you can get but uh my dog here's almost 18 years old and he's been the last couple of weeks just i would say rapidly degrading and last or this morning woke my wife up to he couldn't get up he had peed and pooped and i think literally wore himself out trying to get up so when I got home from work, I gave him a bath. He's up and walking now, but he's just delirious. He's just walking around aimlessly. D, I love you, buddy. It's like he don't even recognize what's going on or where he's at. 
Barely walk. Dragging his feet. Just, this is what he does. He just walks in circles and walking into stuff. And <sighs> so that's what me and the wife are going to be doing here in a couple hours is having him put down and then I'm going to move some stuff out of the way and dig him a grave. He's not in pain anymore and he's gonna go to doggy heaven and chase the ball and frisbee and do all those things one of the hardest things to do is put one of these dogs down this dog was almost 18 years old like i said been with me through everything in my life so get back at it Finish getting him buried.
you guys it is friday the 20 something i don't know 22nd 23rd something like that so as you've seen i had to put my dog down he was almost 18 years old and uh you know something neurological was happening to him the last couple weeks he would like uh drool from the mouth and walk in circles and wouldn't be himself for about a day then he'd go back to normal and then uh obviously on the 20th my wife uh woke up and he had peed and pooped and was kind of rolling in it trying to get up and he couldn't get up his legs wouldn't work so i had to come home and uh, bathe him and we knew it was time i mean he's almost 18 there was nothing a vet was going to be able to do to prolong his life. And I wasn't 100% sure that he was in pain. But nonetheless, uh, I made the decision that everybody has to make when they have pets and that's to put him down. So uh, I did that. And it's been tough. That dog, like I said before, this dog's been with me through everything in my life. So I'd be lying if I said um, going forward without him, it feels like you lost a family member or you lost, you know, uh, somebody that was just always there with you. So it's been pretty tough on me, but I'm out here today working. Finally got um, the courage to just get out here and keep going. I've got another Queensland. So this is Bo. He's two. And uh, we got him primarily because we thought the old dog would kind of teach him how to act. He's a little different. He's very cautious. Uh, he was like normal as a puppy. And then I don't know what happened to him, but he's just very cautious, very scared like he does not like the wind outside he wants to come inside as soon as the trees start blowing whereas diesel my other dog just a smooth cat i mean nothing bothered him he didn't bark um just a good dog all the way around so i'm not saying bo is not a good dog but just not at the level as the other dog but you know, the differences in the two dogs is the red dog would come in here. I could be welding, grinding, and he'd stay in here. Bo, he's not so sure if he wants to be around sparks and welding. So uh, we'll see how he acts now that the older dog is gone. They started to get to where they're both males and they were both fighting. And uh, even the old dog being at his age still wanted to fight with Bo. Um, just a very tough old dog, so... We'll see how Bo goes, and uh, we'll probably get another one. I really like the red ones better than the blue ones. I feel like their uh, demeanor and everything's a little bit better. But when we got him, we had a hard time even finding... I mean, we found blue dogs, but it was like no red dogs out there. And it seems like these blue dogs are just taking over... Because the red ones are hard to find, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm out here, and I had told you guys before, I think in the last video, that I was going to weld some metal to these inner fender, or these inner frame rails, so that the tire didn't catch anything. And so, I've done that on the passenger side, and kind of smoothed everything out, so that nothing can catch. 
And then I've also done that over here on the driver's side so that nothing can catch. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and burn this back piece thing that you've seen in here that I made. I'm gonna start burning all this stuff in um, and call this good. The problem that I've got is get over here where you can see so i've obviously used this alignment hole to align that i mean this is where the factory leaf spring hanger went and i've used that on both sides with that uh tube that comes through here but the problem is is that this sits up about 3 16ths of an inch and this hole is a little bigger than an inch and a quarter, which is what that tube is. This is like inch and three eighths right here. So I was gonna try to put it in the middle and, and weld it, but the gap is just too big and I'd like to TIG it. So as you've seen over on the drill press, I made some little plates and basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get the flapper disc and we're gonna mow this thing down so that it is flat, okay? And then I've made 3 16 uh, plates that we will uh, get in here after this is mowed down. And then that'll, this will sit flat and we'll weld to the frame and on obviously the tube coming through here. And then that'll be that. It doesn't have to be like super, super gusseted because that bar isn't going to ever come out of this. It's going to be a pretty stout so that's what i've been working on i want to get this back stuff all done and and move on to whatever the next thing's going to be i had to cut out a little more metal in here and probably going to lose a bunch more once i start getting the uh the shock tube that goes across it's going to hold the shocks probably going to lose a lot more of the metal in here <laughs> after i welded that piece up there but that's all right uh it's part of building a car, I guess. So follow along and uh, we'll get this knocked out. y'all it's tuesday the 26th of april and uh monday yesterday i uh, built a cross for my dog and didn't didn't do anything on the falcon today i'm out here just kind of mocking everything up and looking at stuff and where shocks are gonna be and where the anti-roll bar is gonna be and blah blah blah, blah. Uh, i believe i already showed you that i welded in the crossbar for where the sliders go so that is done now I'm out here uh, looking at this anti-roll bar. So 
I have some marks on his tube. I don't, I still haven't taken the Randy Kelly, still waiting to hear back from him, but I've got these marked out. You know, I've got like the center and then I've got these marked out. That's about a 20 inch spread right there. If I put the uh, down link out here. So the problem with that, that I think is, is that this thing is, I don't know, around 18 inches wide, the case. So that would mean these would land real close to there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna catch over here and give myself a, like a 25 inch spread and then I'll be able to catch it inside here. Now that's not ideal for adjustment to get underneath here and adjust it, but it spreads it out a little more so it should make it stabler. In my opinion, the further out they are, the stabler, further stable it should be. So I've cleaned up the anti-roll bar and I have it to where these are 25 inches apart. So I'm gonna tack these, just a couple little tacks that way if I need to move anything, I can do that. Uh, I gotta go in here in like 10 minutes and get ready for work. So I'm not gonna be doing much today, but I will come back out tomorrow and continue with um, screwing around out here. Um, another thing I need to make is the bar to catch these shocks. And so you remember I made this piece and put this piece in. I'm gonna have to take that piece out to be able to get a bar in here the way I want it to be. And without having a gas tank in here anymore, this stuff just doesn't need to be in here anymore. So I'm gonna cut it, get it cut back out so that I've got some room. Then once the anti-roll bar is in and that shock tube that goes across that catches the shocks are in, um, that's pretty much, I ain't gonna do anything else back here until I get the car back from getting the cage put in it. Then we'll think about making our own fuel tank back here and we'll address that when we need to. I just don't, we don't need any of this stuff anymore. It's, it's pointless to even have it. And then when he puts the cage in, I'm gonna have him run a couple of bars. You'll see when the anti-roll bar gets put together. Actually, I'll show you. So it's kind of hard to imagine yet because I don't have it pushed up in the car, but that's how this thing goes together. Um, and when he does the cage, I'm gonna have, obviously, the these ends are gonna be welded into the little frame that I made, but I'm gonna have him bring down a couple of bars just to make sure that that thing really ain't going anywhere. But I'll catch back up with you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna get the tick water out real quick, yeah, bust a couple of tacks, and then um, go inside and catch back with you tomorrow. All right, you guys, it's Wednesday the 27th. Didn't end up tacking the anti-roll bar. Went to work yesterday and didn't do that, but before I can get going today, uh, 63 Falcon Turbo, uh, the guy that's building the same car with an LS, he wanted that car up, I guess, and, and screwed up the front. So he basically front half the car and he's in need of like the headlight bucket bezel area. So on these Falcons, it's like the core support. And then you got these two ears that kind of hang off where the fenders bolt. Um, so I watched his video, I'll drop a link, um, and I actually have one of those because I cut them off of the Ranchero, just in case, before I took the Ranchero to get scrapped, I cut those off, so I'm gonna pull the headlight bezel out of this, or the headlight out of this thing, and then, um, try and find a box, get this thing boxed up, and then take it so we can go ship it. Alright, you 
get a box for this thing. Alright, I'm gonna have to modify this box. I'm also gonna send him a shirt. Hopefully he doesn't get mad at me, but uh, I don't know if you can see it, but our Falcon shirt uh, says fuck your LS swap. So hopefully he doesn't get upset with us, but it's all in fun. Whatever floats your boat. All right, y'all. Went and uh, mailed that package off and I picked up some chalk tabs from the metal supply. So I was, excuse me, I had the car up on the lift and again, I'm doing shit that I've never done before, so I'm not really positive what I'm doing, but I think I'm going to try to have one bar in the back that catches both the shocks, and then I can hang the anti-roll bar from and take the arms forward, and they can come down in front of the rear end. I talked to Matt at Funkhauser Race Cars. He says that's fine. It's not going to change anything <clears throat> so with all that being said uh this rear metal that i welded in and all this metal in the back i'm getting ready to cut it out and the reason being is because once i get this other bar in here for the shocks and all that stuff uh i guess this is the area where i'm going to make my gas tank so I'm getting ready, to, I marked it out and I'm getting ready to cut it out. And uh, I'm not gonna look back. So, put you on a time lapse there and then once I've done some more mocking up and I feel comfortable with what it is I'm trying to do, I may have to, so the problem is, is I'm going to get the Funkhauser lower plates and he makes a shock, like a billet shock piece that you can use. Um, and so the problem I think with that is on what I'm trying to do is that's going to move the bar closer to the bar that I put the um, leaf spring hangers on. And that's going to shorten up the amount of area I'm going to have to be able to make a gas tank. So I'm trying to keep that bar as far forward as I can so that I can have a lot of room to, to build a tank. So nonetheless, I'm going to cut this stuff out. And uh, I guess it is what it is. me a little more room to to mess around so I'm gonna do some more pondering and I'll catch up with you guys in a second Thursday the 27th I've already been out here screwing around with stuff there's so much stuff that's gonna attach to this rear end that it's starting to feel a little out of my element here you got the front brace the bottom brace the leaf spring perches the 
shock tabs. Um, those are actually going onto the bar that you just see me welding, but man, I'm just really concerned that once I take this thing to Kelly and he does his thing, we're gonna get it back and everything I've done underneath here may or may not work. So I'll show you what we're doing now. So this is where I think this should be. Obviously, I'm concerned with this hitting the rear end cover. Um, I think it'll be all right. But you know, I've just got this straight pipe in here and uh, it's hard to tell until you get the freaking cover on and get the rear end in here. So I guess for now, I'm just gonna leave this bad boy tacked in and I'm gonna start working from here. Uh, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do now is, now that this bar is tacked in, I'm gonna put the wheels back on, lower the car back down. And so I ordered the Funkhauser lowers and I was told that, I don't know if I already talked about this, I was told to put the shocks at one inch from compressed. So I confirmed that with uh, Matt at Funkhauser, but I'm gonna need his lower brackets because I can do that at the track, but towing a trailer and all that, that ain't gonna work. So these are the Calvert lower spring plates. There's only one bolt hole. The Funkhauser one has about three inches and they're every three quarters of an inch so my theory is that when the shot's in place i'll be able to push this up to the top hole do our hit when we leave pull this down about three inches down and that should allow the shock to have plenty of travel when we're towing and doing all those things so um yeah i'm gonna get the tires back on get this thing lowered and i'm still trying to figure out the shock placement because where the shocks are at and where the inner roll bar is at they're very close to each other and I can't have the adjustment uh, down leaks on the back side that we're in because it's going to interfere with where the shocks at now I could just run a freaking bar across for the shocks and then run another bar in front and run the anti roll bar up front problem with that is is the down links again are going to come right in front of the shock and you ain't going to be able to get to them easy so the down links will be on the other side of the shock which you won't be able to get to them extremely easy but once that's set the car should be set like i've never had to mess with the one on the fox at all um and i don't think it'll be that bad to jack the car up by the rear end get underneath there loosen you know either side or whatever i've got to do make the adjustment and then lower the car back down so way out of my element y'all i'm trying to figure all this stuff out I've never done it before I'm trying to think outside the box a little bit here too so that i don't have a bunch of bars back here that i don't need um so I haven't filmed a lot because I've been trying to brainstorm and mock up and blah, blah, blah. So, may just throw you on a time lapse and we'll just keep cranking. All right, I had to take a break and gather my thoughts, clean up the shop, disaster. Looked like some tweakers lived here. Or we're working here, but cleaned up the shop and then decided to put some weight in the car. So I got these lead I think they came out of a boat. They're probably 50 to 60 pounds a piece or more. And I put three of them back here. So that should somewhat simulate, you know, what the car weight will be when there's gas, blah, blah, blah. It should be close. So now that that's done, put you on a time lapse and I'm gonna get in here and get this stuff figured out. Alright, y'all we're on a time lapse and I got the 
shocks tacked in and then my phone needed to charge it was dead so while it was charging i got the anti roll bar in here and matt at funkhauser said if we're gonna run separation that the arms need to be up so i have the arms up but i had to lose some of the um so, some of the metal i'll show you but that's fine because i can make whatever i need to go over this stuff that i ain't concerned about that whatsoever but that is with the and i roll bar tacked in um i'm getting ready to put the down links or start welding the down links and then i'll probably leave it tacked till i get the rim back from kelly but we've got the shocks tacked in the anti roll bars tacked in and uh, like i say it'll need some sheet metal work or we'll do some carbon work something over to go over this stuff but that's okay i'm not really concerned with how it looks back here it's a race car but i'll show you the down links so i got these cleaned up i need to drill a hole i think about right there on both ends that way i can when I final weld, I can catch some of this. Uh... Basically, this goes in here about that far. I can catch some of it. So I'm gonna drill holes in these, and then I'm just gonna tack these. Um, and I'll tack on the, I'll go pull the other ones out and I'll tack those. And then we'll set those back in the car. And that'll probably do it for this video because I'm, at a standstill with doing anything else till I get the run back and, and the freaking run's got all kinds of stuff to it too. It's got the forward brace from Team Z, um, the bottom brace. I opened up this hole so I can have an AN big breather, big breather guy. Um, Found that out during Rocky Mountain Race Week and the Fox Burin was just cooking. And I wanna make sure it's got enough vent. May even have to do like a, a rear end cooler. I don't know, we'll see. But with the T56 and 373s, it should go down the road. I think this tire is, I don't know, 30 inches tall, something like that. I'm not 100% not sure, but it'll go down the road pretty good. We'll be able to hum along. And the rear end's gonna get hot, so. I'm gonna get this stuff tacked up and then that'll probably do it for this video. And I guess on the next video, or I guess what I can start on while I'm waiting for Kelly is we can get the tunnel cut out of this sucker. I have a tunnel uh, thing that I bought from Jegs that's supposed to be for a T56 and I kind of don't like it. It seems flimsy. I may order something different, send this one back and order something different. Um, but that's the next thing is get the trans up in here and we're getting close getting close to where you can take it and get it uh blasted and then take it and get a cage put in it so put you back on a time lapse and i'll catch up with you in a minute tacked in um, I may remove these lead bars out of here so they don't fall and murder somebody and then uh, put this thing up on the lift and see where we end up uh, the shocks are about an inch and a half not an inch I, put, I did them about an inch and a half just in case this thing settles a little more if that happens that's okay because I I'm waiting on those Funkhauser lowers and I can lower the shock down three quarters of an inch. So we'll be all right. And like I said, when we drive it, we'll go all the way to the bottom eyelet. I like his uh, billet aluminum standoffs. 
but I feel like just moving the eyelet down and throwing the shock on is gonna be easier when you're in the middle of doing all the drag and drive stuff. So I'll put this thing up, get some shots of it for you, and I'll catch you on the next video.